Hey everyone. So yesterday was a frustrating day. First of all, I ended up uh, going to get a kayak um, up in in the uh, next town over, and I left here at like mm, nine thirty ten ish, and I didn't get back till like two. And I didn't have a chance to get any breakfast. And whenever I don't have breakfast, I just, it's like it throws off the rest of my day. So, I was just kind of off all day yesterday. And then I had filmed that unboxing video <clears throat> and had planned to upload that yesterday for yesterday's video. But it just would not upload and come to find out what I thought was unlimited data on my phone I guess I actually don't have and so then I tried to upload it over the internet and my internet at home sucks so it took forever for it to finally upload and I think it uploaded like I don't know somewhere around like four or five o'clock <laughs> Um, early this morning. So anyway, um, I didn't get a chance to film another vi another video yesterday either because I've found it works really well for me to like record a video and then upload it the next day and then record a video and release it the next day. Um, that has been working really well for this past week. Um, but yesterday just threw everything off, um, and I had a headache, and so I wasn't even in the mood to review anything, and I, I started trying to review this, but now my ugh, phone is out of storage. So it's kind of, it was one thing after another yesterday, and I figure I, <laughs> I at least got the video uploaded, and so I'm just gonna call yesterday a wash and restart today and I wish I was starting on a comic I liked better than this one and I know I just reviewed another Bendis um, I, I reviewed a Bendis comic just a couple videos ago so I'm sorry for putting you guys through another one but um, it's what I had read and so I'll go ahead and do my review on it and I try I'll try not to be as negative I mean it's still an absolute absolutely terrible book but I guess I can be happy that they're still releasing comic books in 2020 so anyway um oh and I also wanted to say in yesterday's video um I said I kept saying old-fashioned when I meant old school like old school comics because like old-fashioned to me is like denoting something older like 50s or older 60s maybe and older old-fashioned or, or i'm sorry <laughs> old school is like what i was more talking about with like the covers and just the uh old school adventure stories things like that so i meant to be saying old school not old-fashioned i just wanted to add that correction in this video but anyway um so <laughs> There's not much good to say about this. Um, even the cover, it's like Lois Lane, who doesn't, I don't know, that doesn't really look a lot like Lois Lane to me, but she's standing in front of all the super family saying, you may have an invisible mafia, but I have a super family. Yeah, well, whatever. Who are you? Who are you even talking to? Um, this first part doesn't even matter, so I'm just skipping it. <laughs> it's kind of funny, though. The art for the Snickers commercial is better than any of the art we get in the book. And, I mean, this is John Romita Jr. He's pretty famous. He's got to be getting paid pretty good. And, I don't know, when I compare, like, like this, to me, this looks just as good, if not better, than what we get right here. I don't know. Yeah. 
this this just looks better and I mean this is probably the best art we get in the entire book so yeah let's compare we have Superman you know using his strength Superman using his strength to me this just is better I don't I don't know why John Romita Jr he's apparently very famous and I know it's like even whatever he's getting paid I know it's gotta be equal to or probably better than whatever this guy got paid to draw this and this is done better <sighs> so anyway that's just kind of frustrating um, and then of course Bendis comes in with all of his dialogue and <laughs> right off the bat he says Lois, I am super speed sending this to you to submit to Perry. Excuse me, I have a question. What the heck is super speed sending? So what, Superman now has the ability to manipulate Wi-Fi? He can... How would you... How would his powers allow him to super speed send something? That doesn't even make sense. So then we get a recap of the entire story. Again, even though this is like part four, he knows nobody's reading his books, and so he's got to catch up. If somebody accidentally bought this, he wants to catch them up to what's going on, which it's all a bunch of BS bullcrap. Um, so we're they're finally tracking down the invisible mafia who is. You, like being run by the red cloud and yeah um so they find the place and it's really weird it's like bendis feels like he has to have every character in every panel say at least a one word so connor says this is it super girl says there and then john says this is something and then brainiac says confirmed Does anybody actually have a conversation like that? I don't think so. Um, and again, same exact thing. Next page. Every single character says one word. Kryptonite. Or worse. And then Superman asks him, does your, does your more advanced technology show anything rigged? Man, that is some that is some college level graduate writing there. I can't imagine <laughs> like if Bendis tried getting a grade on this, he would get like a C. This is terrible, terrible writing. So they break down the door <clears throat> and um Bendis has brought in a character from another book he's writing to be a part of this story and it's this so Brainiac 5 is part of the Legion of Superheroes and when I saw the Legion of Superheroes show back when I was a kid I always thought he was really cool but in typical Bendis fashion he turns him into a total loser geek I don't I don't know how else to describe it so he asks can you and Supergirl interrupts him and asks what it's like he hasn't even asked the question yet. Shut up. So then Bra so Brainiac asks her, uh, get me in a picture with this. Adorable fuel-powered automobiles. Ha ha, ha 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 ha. Cause get it? Cause he's, cause he's from the future and fuel-powered automobiles aren't a thing anymore. Oh my gosh. Isn't that funny? Stupid Bendis. Ugh, I cannot wait till he gets off of this book. Can not wait. I'm gonna throw like a party. Um. So and then John Kent, who's been turned into a t total punk, um, says, "You know, Dad, the Red Cloud didn't murder any of those people because of you." And Superman says, "I know, son." And then John says, "I know you say you know, but you don't look like you know." And I can see how fast your heart is beating. <laughs> the crap. Oh, good lord. 
this is not how you write comics. <clears throat> and, and then Superman gives him the stank eye because apparently his son made a good point. Which, oh my goodness, this is, yeah. <sighs> Moving on from this painfulness. So I have a question. Can you tell if that's a, a guy or a girl? Because I totally thought it was a dude. And this individual is like breaking into Star Labs and ta-da, the red cloud is there and they're working together. Um, uh, and I'm not even going to bother reading the dialogue because it's just as bad as what we got on this this page. Um, and then, okay, so look at this. This this is how this individual was portrayed here. This man looks pretty masculine, strong jaw, short haircut. Looks like a dude to me. Turn the page, bam. That's a freaking female. They can't even draw their characters consistently. This is this is why comic books are dying. Right here. So they're hacking into something. Um I don't even know don't even know they're hacking into the some kind of multi dimensional teleportation device, I guess. And it brings through this creature here. And uh, this Dr. Glory, male or female, I don't know, says this will take care of Superman. Dun, dun, dun. <clears throat> and uh, then... <laughs> He says, welcome to our metropolis. And then this, so this is the Red Cloud. And she was like a reporter for the Daily Planet, I think. I don't know. And then uh, she says, do you speak English? Does he speak at all? And threatening look, I guess. I don't even, he can't even make sense of this. So apparently this creature killed the Superman from his Earth. Ooh, scary. Um, so it escapes from Star Labs and is coming to fight Superman. Superman sees it. And, you know, oh man, look at, look at this face. It's all squished in like one dimensional. The eyes are just completely gone there. And he looks like he's skydiving. I'll just leave. I just won't even say anything about that. I think my reaction is what everybody else's reaction would be to that. <clears throat> so Superman is like, I think the group of us might be giving him pause. And the dude keeps coming. And then Connor Kent says, or not. And Superman says, stay back. Yada, yada, yada. Flying, flying, flying toward each other. It's like, he, Bendis tries to make things dramatic, but it just is comical. Like, that is just, that is not dramatic at all. It's laughable. Um, so right before Superman and the, whatever this creature is, right before they collide, Connor Kent comes in and get it instead of the co typical comic book words jumping off the page like boom it's actually connor kent saying boom because he's he's the cool kid <clears throat> so uh i don't even know where so i guess this is john kent now i don't even know where he came from to be flung into superman but anyway connor kent is still so he gets like wrapped up by this parasite and is in trouble. Okay, and... W <laughs> oh my gosh. When I turned the page, I was like, holy crap. Look at all of these word bubbles. You might as well just, like, paint... Like, like just forget drawing these panels. Because, like, 90% of these panels 
are freaking word bubbles. And it's about nothing. I made this point in my last review of Bendis book. You wouldn't get this much dialogue, like, in an actual book. Like, an author would provide details and, like, break up these sentences. This, th these are, like, like, paragraphs of word bubbles. Um, so the FBI is still at the Daily Planet. They've been there for, I don't know, three issues now? I don't even remember. Because this chick, Leon, uh, Marisol Leon, um, bought the Daily Planet, and then the Daily Planet published a news, uh, pop, published a story saying how Leon was part of the Invisible Mafia and was, like, the ringleader of it and how she was trying to take over Metropolis, yada, yada, yada. Um, and I swear, she gets uglier in every issue. It's like last issue, she had this really weird, gross haircut, and now she doesn't even have a haircut, and she just has no chin. <laughs> and bags under her eyes, and... Oh, my word. Yeah, so she comes in and is like, what's going on here? Um, well, first of all, she's like, so she comes in and she's like, who's in charge here? And then she's like, um, all nice and like, I'm here to cooperate in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, well, when you came in, you didn't exactly sound that way. So she starts going back and forth with this FBI agent who, when she first saw Leon, the person she's investigating, she just says, oh, hey. What? What? <sighs> yeah. This is another reason <laughs> this also put me in a bad mood yesterday. Um, so we finish off with uh, this this uh, parasite thing crashing through, or I guess John crashes through the window of the Daily Planet and is like, everyone hide! And they're fighting, the, and the Superman and Connor are fighting the creature outside. And, and um, <clears throat> then... He releases Connor, and it looks like Connor is dead, which, honestly, I hope he does. That would be something new. And <laughs> Connor! Oh, sadness. Um, and then Leon grabs Lois Lane. Again, look at that face. Ugh. And she just says, my house. And, like, she looks like a freaking demon lady. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean in my house, but to be continued. Yeah, lucky us. Man, I wonder if I can just... Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you are subscribed, I hope you're getting notifications. See you guys in the, ne in the next video. Bye.